HBO Max reached 4.1 million subscribers one month after launching. That is very successful for a streaming service. That is successful. That is business. That is good for them. That is proof that direct-to-consumer works. We're going to get into this article. Before we do, if you want to support my work, collegeofthedead.com. I publish College of the Dead Graduation Day. It's full color. It's 48 pages. It's a great read. It's got beautiful artwork. Also, you can sign up now for epicmermaids.com. The Mermaids. It's an epic mermaids fantasy. It's Game of Thrones with mermaids. Full color, 48-page comic. You will love it. Back to the article. HBO Max reached 4.1 million subscribers one month after launch. That is very impressive. CEO John Stanky lauds the flawless launch, as he calls it. Yeah, he, he, they got lucky, okay? But still, it's pretty good. HBO Max attracted 4.1 million overall subscribers after its first month. AT&T CEO John Stanky said Thursday, lauding his team for a flawless launch despite the problems going on in the world today. The figure includes more than a million, but not that much more, more than a million wholesale customers from AT&T wireless packages that include HBO Max. So that means people that got the subscription because they had AT&T wireless packages. That ain't free, but still, it's a little bit less money than their typical uh, subscription sale. And their typical rate for a subscription is $15. About 3 million customers were regular retail subscribers at 15 bucks each. Okay. The company hopes to reach 50 to 55 million HBO Max customers in the U.S. by 2025, and management said Thursday's on Thursday's second quarter earnings conference call that it was on track to meet those subscriber numbers as well as activation and revenue goals. Well, good for you guys, right? That, that is pretty good. The whole That's why direct-to-consumer also subscription service. If we're making entertainment products, if you're making entertainment products, people do want to consume them on a regular basis. They should be very, very high quality, but still on a regular basis, people are expecting to get uh, entertainment content. And yes, continuity helps. Let's move along. Back to the article. Combined, HBO and HBO Max have 36.3 million subscribers up 5% since the end of 2019. So as much as cable has been in trouble, we've all heard about all the cord cutting and stuff like that, HBO and HBO Max are doing all right. AT&T CFO John Stevens said in a recent investor conference that AT&T is pleased with the early trends at HBO Max, but wouldn't give these specific subscriber numbers. He said, hey, you know, you'll wait for the results. So they got the latest financial results. That's the numbers, 4.1 million after one month HBO Max subscribers. HBO Max launched May, 20, uh, May 27th with the full HBO catalog, plus originals like Anna Kendrick starrer Love Life, and a library of old movies and TV shows, including the Studio Ghibli collection and Friends. Everybody knows Friends. Everybody loves Friends. If you don't love Friends, sorry to include you that way. At $15 per month, the service is one of the more expensive streaming products on the market. But because it costs the same as HBO, many pre-existing subscribers to the premium cable network were grandfathered into HBO Max at no additional price, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. $15 is kind of a lot. And uh, how are they going to you know, be successful at $15 if, if other services are less? Well, they're not expecting to be the number one service. They probably never plan on being any number one service. They just plan on being an incredibly successful service that has a lot of money for the extra person that's like, yeah, I'll just get the extra HBO subscription anyway. Not like the uh, money conscious um, people that are like, I can only afford one or two per month. So, you know, they, they thought this through. That's what they wanted and they're successful so far. Stanky said HBO Max had world-class content, was making good on its promise to reach a broader demographic than traditional HBO services. Interesting. Customer engagement has exceeded our expectations, he said, citing 70% more average weekly viewing hours than HBO Now had attracted. That was their other HBO service. So it's really clicked. It's worked for them. Why is it working? Um, I don't know. Let's see if they say why. I don't think they do. It just It is more engaging for whatever reason. Maybe they made a point to because of Friends or something. They had special content that people wanted to see. I don't know. Warner Media content has been on top of that list with all six HBO Max initial originals in the top. Oh, there you go. More originals. 
in the top 25 most popular content pieces, he said. With new originals driving subscriber additions, he noted that by August, the streamer would have 21 new originals, which will sustain our near-term sub-acquisition effort. With the idea being that if we make new, we'll get more subs because people want to see what's new. People always want to buy what's new. They want to see what's new. They want to get more for their money. They're interested in the old stuff. They're interested in the new stuff. But uh, you need to have new stuff or people aren't going to be interested in your older stuff. That's the name of the game. Stanky said his team was hoping that Warner Media Production Engine would be able to fire up back uh, next month and would help ensure HBO Max content in 2021 for continued growth momentum. See, AT&T is under financial pressure, but not that much really. You know, they want to produce more content. They want to spend money. They want to have a competitive service. AT&T, their cell phone business is very successful. They have a lot of cash coming in from it. I don't have numbers to show you. Um, I didn't want to make this like a whole financy thing, but suffice it to say, they have billions of dollars to spend for content. They're trying to spend more money on content. So one of the things they're not going to do is cut back on content creation. We know they're doing the Zack Snyder cut, but I think he's talking about a lot more movies and TV. But he also highlighted that it would take time to return to pre-health event production levels. And that's because, as we've seen in a lot of other articles, uh, a lot of while a lot of studios are trying to ramp back up and start producing ASAP, they're really still very stalled on production. So a lot of stuff, even that they know is going to be a hit for them, they have to wait on producing. HBO Max's HBO titles also complicated the streaming services launch. Interesting. After its debut, WarnerMedia was operating three separate apps with similar names. HBO Go, HBO Now, and HBO Max. Can you tell me the difference between the three? No, nobody can. They can't. The company had hoped that most HBO Go and, and most HBO Now users would automatically just upgrade to the HBO Max app. That would have allowed them like hey, do you want to upgrade your HBO Go to HBO Max? So they could have just phased out HBO Go and phased out HBO Max if these guys, if their subscribers would just be convenient enough to do all their work for them. That would have been nice. But it wasn't able to strike, uh uh-oh, HBO Max distribution deals with Roku and Amazon, leaving a large portion of its HBO subscribers without a way to access HBO Max on their connected devices. So if you have connected TV devices and you're using, you know, Amazon service, using Roku, whatever, uh, you can't watch your HBO Max. If you can't watch it, you're not going to subscribe to it. All right. The company has since said it would retire the HBO Go app and rebrand HBO Now as simply HBO. Good idea. You need to consolidate, guys. You got to consolidate. It's part of growth, right? Leaves fall on the ground. You got to rake them suckers up. Throw them away. Sometimes burn them. If you do burn them, do it safely. Stanky on Thursday's call referenced that, saying, quote, we worked hard to make HBO Max available to consumers through nearly every content distributor in the United States. And good for that. Distribute your content everywhere you can. He said, we tried repeatedly to make it available to users of Amazon Fire devices, including those customers that purchased HBO via Amazon. But he said, quote, unfortunately, Amazon has taken an approach of treating HBO Max and its customers differently from how they've chosen to treat other services and their customers. Um, yeah. So basically, Amazon Fire and Amazon's basically saying, uh, you're a strategic competitor. So we're not going to so quickly make it easy for people to get HBO Max through their Amazon Fire. We'd rather they just watch Amazon Prime shows. Okay, is that all right with you? No, it's not a right with them, so they can sue each other about it. Wall Street has been discussing the growth outlook for HBO Max compared with the streaming giants like Netflix as well as Disney+, NBC Universal's Peacock, and others. Who has Peacock? All right, if you have Peacock, let me know in the comments below. And do you like Peacock? Netflix remains the largest streaming service with 193 million subscribers. Among the new entrants, only Disney Plus has released regular subscriber numbers. And why has Disney Plus released those numbers? Because it's been incredibly successful, super home run um, by Kevin Meyer. He was the one who was in charge at Disney. He was one of their like high-level uh, vice presidents 
and he's since left for another company, uh, or Ken Meyer, maybe Ken Meyer. In any event, uh, he executed on that, and he, man, that guy is amazing. He should have been CEO of um, Disney after uh, Bob Iger. But in any event, yeah, they racked up 26.5 million subscribers in their first three months at Disney and now have a base of nearly 55 million subscribers. So Disney's killing it with Disney Plus, absolutely killing it, which is unfortunate because it means they're going to drive their content creation for their subscribers. So that's going to be priority one, direct to consumer. If you're an entertainment producer at, at this uh, moment, uh, comics, film, music, TV, whatever it is that you do, um, direct to consumer is where it's at. I mean, it's technology. It always would have been this way if we had the technology available. It would have been the same thing 30, 40 years ago. Technology was never available. Now it is. So now it's revolutionizing all of entertainment content distribution. HBO Max isn't a game changer for AT&T. So this isn't an issue. We're going to talk about an analyst uh, who's basically saying, well, it's not going to change the business of AT&T that much. Um, and the reason is because HBO Max, big, small, whatever, it's still a, it's not going to be the number one streaming service in the world, no matter what. It just isn't. Uh, it could be very significant for our content distribution, but it's not going to move enough of a needle at AT&T to change the makeup of AT&T as a company because uh, it's too small within AT&T and it'll always be too small. When you invest in AT&T, you're still investing in um, a very successful, because it is successful, a good cash flow generating um, subscription service company with the phone platform and now more so with these entertainment platforms. Um, but at, it's not going to change the nature of the business of AT&T. So let's see what this analyst says. So uh, Vijay uh, Jayant wrote in a report published days after the launch of the streaming service, HBO Max's launch has thus far been notably less smooth than the launch of Disney Plus due to a variety of factors, including the confusing branding, uncertainty about how to get the product, and limitations on how consumers can actually watch the product, particularly on television. And we just talked about those challenges, HBO um, Max compared to HBO Go, compared to HBO Now, the confusion with that, and the fact that Amazon is not going to cooperate with helping to promote uh, HBO Max and get any kind of uh, sustainable momentum for subscribers. They, they're happy that if you have Amazon uh, Fire, you can't get HBO Max. Uh, that, that, that makes ha Amazon happy for now because they're a competitor. He added, with that said, we believe HBO Max is a good product with strong content lineup and a solid but not particularly distinctive user interface and the backing of a highly regarded brand. Okay. Explaining why HBO Max isn't a game changer for AT&T in the eyes of investors, the same way that Disney Plus has been for Disney, uh, Jayant said, content remains a relatively small portion of the AT&T business, not the core as it is with Disney, so we see little chance that investors will begin to look at AT&T on the sum of the parts basis, valuing HBO Max on a per subscriber basis as with Disney and Disney Plus. So, it, it really just basically replaced what I just said is that, um, you know, $45 million a month or, or $60 million a month of um, revenues for a company that does uh, tens of billions um, in revenue or whatever, it, it's not going to be a substantial part of what their business is. And Disney, because it's a content company, if it didn't have a dedicated streaming service like a successful Disney Plus like it has now, the future of the company would be zero. Right now, they're undergoing tremendous challenges because of the shutdown. But even with that, don't get fooled. You know, uh, Disney can take a $50 billion charge if they need to. Like a one-time, oh, damn it, the, you know, we lost $25 billion, we lost $40 billion for a once-in-a-hundred-year event um, like the shutdowns. Uh, but... It, Disney's not going anywhere and they don't run out of money. They practically print their own money, not just from cash flow, but because of their huge, huge status as a, a financial entity. I would not, I'm not making investment recommendations here. I would stay away from um, Disney as a stock, you know. But that said, Disney's not going anyplace. And Disney Plus ensures that they're going to probably be the number two streaming service compared to uh, Netflix. And that's a gigantic. Uh, position to have in entertain, entertainment content and distribution. They're not going anywhere whether we like them or not. 
Stanky, who also became CEO um, July 1st, that's good for him, uh, recently said that amid the shutdowns and stuff, we expect the customer demand for HBO Max to be as to be high, as high as what we expected. He added, our investment levels are probably a little tempered for this year because a lot of that was production oriented, and we're looking at a situation where we can't drive as much production as we like. So they're not going to be putting out as much cash into production content and new shows because they can't. Uh, people aren't filming movies right now. They're not filming TV, very little. So as a result, um, they just can't, which means they're not going to be spending a lot of cash doing it. Besides converting HBO subscribers to HBO Max, Thank you also talked about bundling the streaming product with other AT&T offerings, including wireless, broadband, and TV packages. They have multiple platforms of direct-to-consumer uh, products. And um, this guy, Stanky, seems to be doing an okay job. He just got there. Uh, they're a very strong company. They have a lot of debt, but they can handle the debt. The debt is incredibly manageable for them. And um, who's going to give up their phone um, subscriptions right now? You know, who's going to say, yeah, I don't need my iPhone anymore. I don't need my phone. I don't need my um, whatever streaming services. HBO has been around forever. People have been paying cable, uh, paid uh, HBO subscriptions for what, whatever it is, 40 years, 50 years, God only knows. They're, they're not going to stop. So uh, they're in a great position. Um, that said, give me your comments below. What do you think of streaming services? What do you think of direct-to-consumer? Do you see this as uh, the success that The Hollywood Reporter and I do? Um, or do you think we should be more uh, skeptical of it? Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Click the bell for notifications so you can find out about stuff like this. And if you want to support my work, collegeofthedead.com. I can't think of a better cause. Uh, you can get graduation day. You can get the making of books. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Check it out. It ships immediately. And sign up for the upcoming series, The Mermaids. It's an epic mermaid fantasy. It's Game of Thrones with mermaids, really. It's full color. It's a self-contained universe of 30... Um, mermaid characters. It's really wild. It's, I'm really, really proud of how that came out. I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you. See you soon.